The Blitz Spirit was a rare moment of hope to emerge from the ruins of heavily bombed London during World War II. The British people were brought closer together through the common goal of surviving the war, and the then Queen Elizabeth, now known as the Queen Mother, nurtured the solidarity. The Queen Mother was a key part of Blitz Spirit. She really felt that it was her job to give hope. It was her job to go and see people and say, it will be better. And I think she knew that it meant so much to people for her to go out there. Elizabeth was at the forefront of raising the nation's spirits during the war. But in the dark days of the Blitz, would even her best efforts have an impact? Well, I think the Blitz Spirit and this idea of keep calm and carry on um, is very much exemplified in the Queen Mother. That sense of putting duty first, of being visible, of trying to connect with the public because you are a figurehead on one hand, but also taking this role as mother of the nation. The Queen Mother was this kind of on the spot task force figure that would go and rally people. It just gave everybody a sense of hope, a sense of optimism, a sense of strength. And indeed, the Ministry of Supply, when they did uh, figures afterwards of productivity on days after visits from the King and the Queen, uh, productivity would increase. I wish you all every good fortune in the admirable work that you are carrying on. People had had a lift, people were re-energised again, and it was that that the Queen Mother uh, really did bring to the war effort. Elizabeth's unsinkable optimism and rabble-rousing character was well received on the home front but also felt keenly behind enemy lines. Hitler famously called the Queen Mother the most dangerous woman in Europe. And that gives you some indication of how he perceived her inspiring popularity to be a real threat, um, that actually it would continue to encourage um, British people to keep going in the face of what looked like certain defeat. It is not putting a smile on their face. I'm sure the Queen Mother loved the notion that Adolf Hitler dubbed her the most dangerous woman in Britain. This idea that she was rallying the troops and those at home and um, having a huge effect on morale, a positive effect on morale. She was wonderfully defiant. That can't have gone down at all well in Nazi headquarters, I wouldn't have thought. On the 11th of May, 1941, the blitz came to an end. Four years later, at 6 p.m. on the 8th of May, 1945, Germany surrendered unconditionally. The king broadcast to the nation that the war in Europe was finally over. Germany, the enemy who drove all Europe into war, has been finally overcome. The queen and I know that the ordeals which you have endured, we are proud to have shared some of them with you. So V-Day, Victory in Europe Day, was huge. The end of the war. But you've got huge, jubilant crowds gathering, uh, people jumping in the fountains in Trafalgar Square. You've got people dancing in the streets. And at the heart of this is thousands of people gathering to pay tribute to the royal family. The royal family were at the heart of the nation's celebrations. The king and queen had been a part of the war effort. And that was displayed in the appearances. Everybody went absolutely wild. The king and queen were called onto the balcony eight times. They were there sometimes with their daughters, sometimes with Sir Winston Churchill. People went crazy. It was the most wonderful, wonderful day. The average Briton were calling for the king and queen because they absolutely perfectly embodied the spirit of the nation. The war had finally come to an end. VE celebrations were over, but Elizabeth's contributions to the war effort continued. The Queen Mother never forgot the East End, and she did post-war make many visits. Um, she also never forgot her military and wartime connections and was very much a symbol going forward of the proper memorials around events like D-Day and VE Day. We see her again and again at the heart of celebrations to mark the 50th anniversary of the end of the war or 
And just before her 99th birthday, she unveiled a memorial at St Paul's Cathedral to those civilians who died during the bombing of London. So this was absolutely in her heart to the end of her life. Now, um, to take the blitz as it came, they defied it. In particular, Elizabeth's unique relationship with the East End was never lost. After all its residents had been through during the Blitz period, her commitment to them continued, visiting them whenever she could. The famous one is from 1987 when she visited Limehouse. She went to a pub, <laughs> she poured a pint, so she herself was 87 at this time, poured a pint and then drank it, drank about three quarters of it, we're told. She was the best of them and uh, for them she was not uh, this great other distant privileged woman. She was a woman who had gone through the war with them, at one with them, had seen them through. One lovely thing was that every year whilst the Queen Mother was alive at her house, Clarence House, on her birthday would arrive a huge cake from the East End, which was from all of those that she had comforted during their terrible suffering. Long after the war, really right through to the end of her life, she was one of theirs and there was a set of real affection and bond between them that really actually, you know, never died. The Queen Mother's death on the 30th of March 2002 marked the end of an era for Britain and the monarchy. I remember it very clearly, a sort of terrible feeling of, of loss when she went. There was a feeling that somehow a tremendous sort of spirit who had been still very visible right up to the end had suddenly left us and uh, that was very sad. I think that everybody who remembers the Queen Mother remembers her affectionately. And there was this great outpouring when she died. She had lived a long life, 101 years, but she was a great loss. And the only thing that we can take from that as a silver lining is that so much of what she exemplified in her life ha has since been adopted by the younger royals. The Queen Mother's efforts during the Blitz set standard for future royals, particularly in times of national crisis. The Queen Mother's example was very, very important to the other members of the family and to the younger ones uh, as they saw what she did. And certainly the, the way that the royal family operate today, the Queen is very quick to go to a place of, of tragedy or crisis. Even though the Queen Mother is now dead, people still talk about her in World War II. She set the bar for what is expected of a Queen in a war. You go out there, you see people, you think about others rather than yourself. That is really important. There is this reflection that the Queen Mother's contribution during the Second World War should always be echoed, that it was a hugely successful example of where royals are at their best, connecting with the general public. And we very much see that in Princes William and Harry and the way that they now carry out their difficult times and using your position of enormous privilege.